Ah, Thai Airways. It's been nine months since my viral Thai Airways review where I spent 17 hours flying from Bangkok to London. Today we're gonna see if one of Southeast Asia's biggest international airlines has improved with the removal of COVID restrictions as we fly their latest Airbus E350 on a nine hour flight from Bangkok to Melbourne. <laughs> Given how difficult it is to get to Australia in business class these days due to the lack of capacity, I know Thai Airways is an option many of you will be looking at. So how are they holding up? And are they once again a good option for long haul travel? How much cost cutting is still noticeable at this financially struggling airline? Well, let's find out. If you're new here, you might think, why listen to me? Who is this random dude? I'm Nonstop Dan, a half Swede and half American who has been obsessed with airplanes for as long as I can remember. Over the past eight years, I've been lucky to call reviewing airlines my full-time job, and in that time, I've flown 150 different airlines, always self-funded. Nothing makes me happier than seeing you guys have an amazing trip after following my advice. So I hope this video helps you with your choices. Good morning from one of my favorite cities in the world, Bangkok. Our 8.20 a.m. departure means we need to wake up before 6 a.m. and by 6.20, we hop in our taxi to BKK. Good morning from Bangkok to Barnabumi. Uh, still can't nail the pronunciation. <laughs> where it is time, nine months later, to give Thai Airways another try. When flying from Bangkok, Thai Airways offers a relaxing business class check-in experience decked out with seats, beautiful flowers, and naturally friendly service. One thing I wanna clarify, just for the few people who misunderstood, in my previous video, I wasn't saying Thai Airways was terrible. I was just saying that the state of Thai Airways in comparison to prior years was sad to see in terms of product degradation, but it still was nothing terrible. Today, of course, I hope it's even better than last time. So all we can do is hop on board and find out. Within two minutes, our bags are checked and we head through the exclusive business class security and immigration boarding passes in hand. Thai Airways has pretty reasonable cash fares from Thailand to Australia at the moment, but I saved even more on my ticket as I'll share at the end of the video. As always, I have some juicy tips to share with you guys. Last time, I reviewed the Royal Orchid Business Class Lounge, which is a pleasant space, but nothing spectacular like you'll find at other major hubs in the region. At 7.40 a.m., we head to our boarding gate D2, where 300 passengers are waiting to board our sold-out A350 flight. I adore the A350, so it's always a pleasure to see this massive raccoon face staring at you from the gate below. The Thai Airways A350-900 features a total of 321 seats, with 289 economy class seats in a 333 layout and 32 business class seats, all featuring direct aisle access. Just like many configurations nowadays, seats are staggered between being closer to the aisle and closer to the window, or in the middle section, closer to the aisle or closer to each other. The odd numbered seats are far superior to the even numbered ones by the windows, and when I booked just three weeks before the flight, only 16J and 17K were available, so Oscar and I snagged those immediately. I can't wait to show you the difference between this and the 777 cabin, so let's hop on board. Welcome. Kapkunka. As you can see, there are a variety of seats to choose from with the so-called honeymoon seats in the middle and the vastly different odd and even numbered rows. My seat, 17K, looks especially welcoming on this sunny morning. Waiting at the seat are a pillow, mattress pad, and blanket, all of which we'll have a look at in flight. I've shown you this type of seat many times before, but it's always worth another quick tour. Before that, how is this seat less than five years old? This seat is in a rougher state than Balenciaga's public perception. This seat is in such bad state, it makes air choreo look fresh. 
I know I'm jaded, I'm spoiled, but in terms of privacy, this is not an industry leading seat. Despite that, it's a very comfortable product. There's storage here and there, not copious amounts, but definitely enough. There are great detailed seat controls that allow you to customize your seating position to your preferences. There are of course power ports so you can keep everything charged on the long journey. The Tai A350 fleet also has Wi-Fi, but conveniently that was not working on my flight. So I had to watch TV instead of answer emails. Real shame. The tray table is basically plastered to the seat in front of you, holding on for dear life with this little latch. It's a sturdy design that allows you to visit the toilet while using the table, which is always appreciated, especially since I'm pretty sure I've reached Star Alliance gold status based on my number of round trips to the toilet on board Star Alliance aircraft this year. Speaking of the lavatories, the ones on the A350 always feel spacious and this one is stocked with a couple of toiletries. This royal silk only sign was constantly ignored and at one point I walked in on a poor lady who hadn't figured out how to lock the door. The crew on board are well intentioned, definitely slightly robotic by Thai service standards, but friendly all the same. They handed out one of my favorite onboard drinks, Butterfly Pea Juice. I told someone about this drink recently and they gave me the most puzzled look saying, Thai people drink pea from butterflies? There are also scented hot towels which mark a good start to any flight in my hot towel obsessed opinion. The crew also take meal orders and explain the options since there are no menus which is just a bummer at this point. The first meal is breakfast where the options are yellow noodles with chicken or prawns and the second meal is a dinner with beef fried rice or sea bass. As always, I pre-ordered a VGML, but I think you'll be curious to see this one because the meal surprised me. As we push back, it's difficult to contain the nerves mixed with excitement as Oscar and I get ready to head to our 100th country very soon, completing our multi-year goal of visiting 100 countries while we're 25. What a journey it's been, with the past two years completely documented on our other channel, Oscar and Dan. Of all those countries, Thailand is one of our favorites, so we were sad to leave after spending three wonderful weeks with my family. We have quite a long taxi out, so I can't contain myself. We have to check out the amenity kit. These are some mighty nice contents. I love the hand sanitizer spray. And I'm so glad to see that this has stuck around as an amenity, despite the lifting of COVID restrictions, since sanitizer is always useful. There's also mouthwash and several other essentials. I also take this chance to explore the entertainment system, which is fairly decent. The TV show selection isn't huge, but there are lots of movies and best of all, the superior form of entertainment, an exterior camera. The headphones that go along with that are okay. I do like these on-ear rather than over-ear headphones since my ears tend to overheat. So these are especially handy when there are no individual air vents. As we take off, this is the last reminder that you guys can win a free flight to give away to a loved one. All you need to do is be subscribed to my channel and then enter the link in the description. Good luck, guys. Just quickly, if you're looking for gift ideas and still have no idea what to get someone, a VPN, especially for a traveler, is one of the most useful and appreciated things you can get. Oftentimes when traveling, we're connecting to public Wi-Fi networks, but those networks are not always safe. Many times people fall victim to so-called man-in-the-middle attacks, where people can pose as public free networks that you connect to, but then the person who is running that network is receiving all your data when you're unprotected. This is of course an even bigger risk at airports, coffee shops around the world, and places you're not familiar with. By signing up for today's video sponsor, NordVPN, you're protecting yourself or the person you're giving this gift to with the fastest VPN in the world. NordVPN encrypts your data and browsing so no one else can see it. And they give an additional defense with threat protection. By going to nordvpn.com slash nonstopdan, you can find the best deals right now on giving NordVPN as a gift or giving the gift of online security to yourself. Like four months free when you buy a two-year plan. Don't forget to use code nonstopdan at check out. A mere 30 minutes after takeoff, breakfast is served. Out 
the windows, Pattaya. This meal is absolutely delicious. One of the best in flight meals I've had in a while. Sadly, it's only one dish without a starter or a dessert, and the regular meals are presented just like mine. By 45 minutes after takeoff, the trays are cleared and it's time to get to work. I love the efficient service, which is, of course, enabled by serving everything cafeteria style on one tray. I spend the following hours working as we cruise over Malaysia, Singapore, and then Indonesia. Since the first meal isn't so big, I ask the crew what snacks they have on this nine hour flight. Zero, not even cup noodles. That shocking in economy class, let alone in business class. The crew eventually offer me some nuts, which I enjoy with more pea juice from some poor butterflies. I just can't make sense of not having a cheap snack selection on board, but I guess Thai Airways has to survive somehow. And as was heavily publicized, Thailand recently raised the government set price for instant noodles from 17 to 23 cents. On a thousand dollar ticket, that's simply too much, I guess. You may notice I've been sneaky and set up my bed without showing you guys. About three hours into the nine hour flight, I give in to the temptation of making my bed. I have so much work to do that I'm just praying I don't fall asleep. And let me tell you, that's a real risk here because the bed is pretty comfortable. Ty has this thick mattress pad that combines with a plush pillow and blanket to create blissful sleep. Or in my case, torture because I don't have time for a nap. I couldn't quite figure out if Thai still offers turndown service, but it didn't seem like they did on this flight. Instead, I try working from bed and gradually just move my seat upright until I'm sitting up straight in a jumble of bedding. The poor guy next to me is virtually half in the aisle in bed mode as we leave Indonesia and head toward Australia. Having grown up on the other side of the world, I'm not over how cool it is flying around here. As we see Australia from above, I'm overwhelmed with gratitude that so much of the world has reopened when much of this region was completely off limits for so long. Now, I live to eat, so the relatively small breakfast and subsequent nuts left me pretty starving. Thankfully, Thai is generous enough to offer apples and bananas to the starving crowd. And normally, I wouldn't be thrilled by an apple in business class, but this one really hits different. I'm sorry I don't have anything more exciting to say than that I worked until the pre-landing meal service, which commenced an insane three hours before landing. What do they think this meal is, 11 Madison Park? But listen, I'm not complaining about getting fed. Dinner starts with a non-veggie amuzbush, which looks nice. The crew apologize they don't have any special meal amuzbush dishes, but they also provide this trail mix, another butterfly pea juice, and a hot towel. Not bad. Finally, dunch is served. That's what my friends and I call a combined lunch and dinner, which is far superior to brunch in my opinion. This time, the meal is served directly on the table with this delicious bean curd skin and shiitake mushroom appetizer. I could have three of these. Next up, the main course, which takes almost an hour to serve for some reason. It isn't quite as nice as the appetizer, but again, I'm not gonna complain about getting food. Here's a quick look at the regular meal, which looks to be about the same size. Dessert is more fruit, and for a country with so many incredible desserts, what is this? The non-vegan dessert options were cheese or lemon meringue. Why not serve Thai desserts, which are some of the most amazing in the world? This meal service ends an hour and a half after it began, just as the sun starts setting outside along the southern coast of Australia. Sorry mate, but this wood is okay. I've already sprayed it. No excuse is good enough. Our Australian biosecurity laws are strict. This is to protect Australia's agriculture and unique wildlife from animal and plant diseases. As we approach Melbourne, I reflect on the state of Thai as 2023 is upon us. They have definitely improved somewhat since my last trip with them, but I can't help feeling like they still have so much untapped potential. Thai people are really some of the kindest in the world, have some of the best food in the world, and seriously know how to do luxury. 
but none of that is reflected on board with the current product. I'm not saying not to fly Thai, but there are better options out there, many of which you can check out on my channel and other reviews. Thai isn't in a sad state anymore, they're in a middle state, which isn't an ideal place to be either in a region with so many top players. Still, for the price, it can be totally worth it. And as you guys know by now, I am a mass spender of Air Canada Aeroplan points. I spend my Aeroplan points like they're expiring in 24 hours. Luckily, they're super easy to earn. I told you many times about how I get most of mine since that's available for the whole world, namely buying them on sale. Paying 45,000 miles for this flight one way with the taxes is equivalent to paying about $700 for this one way ticket, which I think is incredibly good value. Of course, most of you will prefer earning those points completely for free, which you can do with credit cards, like one of my favorite cards out there, the American Express Gold Card, which I go on and on about. It has a 60,000 point sign up bonus in the US, and you can learn more and apply at the link in the description below, which really helps support me and the channel. So with that, thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, and I can't wait to see you for another very fun video very soon. Until then, happy holidays and fly safe.